moving into our next session, the future of entertainment. Who will lead the war of content creation, consumption, and monetization? For, to chair the session, we have Anand Rangaswamy, Kairos Media Private Limited. Anand, may I invite you on stage, please? And to take the discussion further, we have with us Neeraj Roy, Managing Director, Hangama Digital. May I invite you on stage, please? We have Vivek Jain, COO, MX Player. Thank you for being with us. Megha Tata, Managing Director, Discovery Asia Pacific. May I invite you on stage, please? Yeah, Anand, the stage is all yours. Yeah, hi. Hello. Yeah, is that her? Yeah. Thank you all. Uh, it's a lovely panel because uh, it, uh, the panelists, uh, you know, take you down the ages, you know. Uh, Mega and I worked together at Star TV, uh, I think 25 years ago, something like that. 30, I think. No, not 25 years ago or so. Uh, Neeraj, I know for 20 plus years. And Vivek, I don't know as well, but for some time. So, I think... The question asks who will lead the war, uh, both in consumption and creation of content. And between us, we've lived the, you know, the birth of satellite television all the way to what Vivek is doing today or Neera is doing today in Hanama. So it's, it's fascinating. So the way I've set up this is that uh, uh, I requested the co panelists not to do any PowerPoint presentation and bore everyone to death. But uh, what we're saying is uh, each of them will talk for about two minutes and present their views on the topic, talk for two minutes, and then I will draw from their responses and hopefully uh, you know, funnel into a conversation that you can distill and get some takeouts from. Yeah, so to begin with, uh, Mega, uh, two minutes, and what's your view on who will lead the war? Who will win the war, perhaps? All right, so who's going to win the war? Um, I think before we get down to uh, the winning and losing part of it, uh, like you uh, alluded to, I've been around in the industry for over 30 years now, almost 30 years actually. And uh, the kind of uh, shift and the, the change which I've seen in the last five to seven years has been much more than what I've seen in the previous 25 years. So that's the, the reality of the, the, the entertainment space today. You know, things are changing so fast, like before you realize it, at the end of the day, there is a, something new uh, technology is offering and you need to uh, work around that. Um, however, having said that, while change is happening, uh, you know, and, and this, this has happened many times in this 30 odd years, that when, uh, when there was uh, television and uh, uh, when television came, everybody said the print will die. Uh, print did not die. Uh, when radio happened, uh, um, they said print and TV will die. But uh, FM radio, died. you mean? FM radio. Radio happened. A long yeah, time and then then of course digital happened, and uh, uh, everyone said that TV and everything was going to die, and everything is moving. So I, I think no one's dying. First of all, um, it, it's not an either or. It's a very and environment we're living in. What's definitely changing is the consumption pattern from uh, from uh, from your entertainment consumption point of view. Uh, clearly, multi-platform utilize your uh, usage of uh, from uh, from a consumer is is definitely happening we know that we live it every day uh, but what I think really will play out is the content so clearly content becomes a very integral part of the storytelling which is every entertainment publisher broadcaster uh, needs to sort of keep in mind content continues to rule which is we've always said content is king if the king is only becomes stronger um, and I think that really is a very critical mix which we need to keep in mind is how you're really getting the content so Clearly, that's the key. Second, I think the uh, uh, the fact also is that while digital consumption has increased a lot in the last uh, year or so, the television consumption has also increased, and, and it's almost like the time spent on television is as much, or probably more than digital in terms of uh, my uh, my understanding is about eight to ten times higher than uh, digital consumption when you look at the aggregation of uh, consumption. Um, so clearly, there is an audience for all, and there is content for all. What really would be important for most of the publishers specifically, and I guess a lot of broadcasters, 
you know Vivek will speak more about that as well that you know there is a there is a movement which is taking place the transformation which is taking place from linear to non-linear uh, so there are a lot of uh, broadcasters who have moved already uh, from uh, uh, you know uh, linear to a D2C play and uh, for example even Discovery is at the moment in the process of launching a D2C proposition this year so there is a collaboration of sorts which is taking place within the ecosystem of how you want to utilize your pro your content across these multiple platforms and how do you sort of reach out to the consumers to me so content yeah, is maybe I'm going to interrupt you there so that sorry yeah everybody so can. I just want to wind up by saying that um, you know it is not an either or nobody's sure. going to die but no. it's a it's an and environment in a way you set up the either or you see you say content is king, and the, one of the problems is content means money. So while you have consumption both on digital and on broadcast and every single format, some of, some of them aren't able to monetize their content. So that's going to be a challenge, you know. Uh, some years ago I met uh, Boris Johnson's brother in Bombay, and uh, we, we, I'm talking about 10 years ago, and uh, we're talking about why small countries can't get their economy right. And he told me every prime minister knows how to get the economy right. The problem is they don't know how to get the economy right and get re-elected. That is a problem. <laughs> so I, I, I think everybody understands the content game. Everybody knows how to pro produce content. So I'm going to come to you, Vivek, and say, is the challenge going to be not so much content? Because you can't keep producing content and not earn money. So how do you monetize the content? Is that where the challenge is going to lie? And therefore, who wins that battle? Yeah, I think good question. I think uh, monetization is a challenge, uh, especially on the digital space, more than uh, linear. Uh, uh, traditionally, there are just two models, uh, either advertisement or subscription. Uh, I think last year's numbers were uh, out of the $500 million that digital uh, world market was worth, I think 80% was uh, award. So at least right. for the near future, I think ads is going to pay a, play a key role uh, in monetization. Uh, but I think in the longer term, it has to be subscription. So, so will you, will you, through your revenue, be able to uh, produce content of the quality that challenges the big budget broadcasters? I mean, that's that's uh, the kind of dead end you get into. So I think uh, in the in the short term, uh, it's it's going to be challenging. <clears throat> but there's no doubt that uh, over the next four or five years, we will have a billion people connected to the internet, streaming content, and at that scale. Uh, the ad revenue uh, or the subscription, both models will be viable. Yeah, uh, Neeraj, uh, you know, you've seen the days from, uh, say, BPROA, which was, it cost 20 lakhs an episode, a lot of money in, in 1996 or 5 or whatever that was. And uh, monetization was easy. You, you know, you sold out of inventory, you know, Monica, you were a mega, you were part of the team which, <laughs> which sold out the inventory. Yeah. You know, it used to sell at $600 for 30 seconds, uh, for, yeah, for 30 seconds. But increasingly the problem is not producing content. I mean, you go to Bandra and you go to a coffee shop, there are 20 content producers having meetings. You know, so, you know, I, I look at the topic and say the answer, I mean, the real battle is not who can who will win the battle of content, who will win the battle of monetization. And Neera, you have seen all phases of the monetization. So Anand, firstly, uh, if you're still in touch with Boris Johnson's brother, uh, do make an introduction to you know to Arvind Kejriwal. <laughs> Absolutely, <right. laughs> sure. Uh, I think you know for the benefit of the audience, let me just sort of in the two minutes that you give me, uh, first just tee this up right. Uh, so the way I look at it, you know, you first let's look at the sources of what we define as content. Till now, the largest sort of you know audiovisual source of content or rather platform of content has been television. It's about a 75,000 crore market in India. The second biggest massively influential category is cinema and films. We do about 1,500 films a year across 16, 17 different languages, about six times that of what Hollywood does. Uh, but it's a much smaller market, close to about 14, 15,000 you know, crores or so. And then there is this uh, other bucket of content, which is you call it, you know, user generated, call it short form, etc., which has predominantly been driven by whatever has happened in the digital ecosystem the last eight, ten years. So that's your sources of content as such. Then you look at, you know, the different sort of players in this ecosystem, and I define them as five. So you've got uh, in a market like India, 
you know, telecom companies have largely been enablers because there's really two things which are going to drive this. One is connectivity, the other is devices. Connectivity, that sort of story is now well on its way, uh, it's happening. We've seen about a 90% drop in average cost of data uh, from, you know, 250 uh, rupees to potentially now for 50, 60 bucks you can get 30 gigs of data. Uh, so you've got telecom companies who are attempting to be enablers, but they're largely platforms because they're not creators. You've got large broadcasters slash, to some extent, studios as well, who are morphing in that. And that, to Mega's point, because their audiences were moving from television to a more interactive form, uh, it is imperative that they, therefore, that's Hotstar and the Zs and the Sonys, etc. And they need to sort of protect that audience as such. The third is uh, you've got these international players who are known as quote-unquote OTT. You know, so you'll have the likes of Netflix, you'll have uh, in some markets, and we'll talk about that later, like why are e-commerce companies getting into this space? Uh, then you'll have a bunch of local players themselves, you know, in which, uh, you know, companies like ours, companies like, you know, what Vivex, which they have been both a broadcaster and yet in an independent form now enabling something, and a whole bunch of uh, entities including a lot of regional players and lastly you will have the device ecosystem as well because the device companies are also wanting to get access to the consumer and not just be a hardware entity as it were. So this mix of about five odd uh, uh, constituents at this time has about 25 to 30 players in the market and to an outsider that will seem very cluttered but it isn't because uh, the way we I looked at this I see a market about five years out, you'll have about 500 to 750 million consumers who are actively consuming content through digital media, <coughs> call them OTTs or whatever. And I believe anything from between 50 to 100 rupees per month for a bouquet of services, not for just one service, maybe three, four, five, and they can come uh, in. Anybody want to find uh, Neeraj, put a hand up and meet him at lunch? Yeah, huh? so yeah. essentially a 60 to 75,000 crore potential market is what is being baked at this point in time. Yeah, so, you know, the, Neeraj, the way I'm getting it, the biggest gain are going to be content producers. Yes. You know, uh, isn't that uh, saying? Yes, uh, you know, they, they are, and that's you know, why I started with where does this come from? Right. So the, the creators have an opportunity, and there's reason for that. Right. right? Uh, sorry, just take 30 seconds more. See, you are finding that even though we've had 900 channels, of which 400 have been sort of news channels, so you know, leave them aside. Those balanced 500 have really catered to six, seven key language, you know, clusters. But when you go deeper into them, you find that they are not really telling stories for the entire sort of mix, because we are a single TV household. So with the power of the remote, you know, being with the homemaker predominantly, and hence there is homogeneous nature of content across each, yeah, you know, sure. dance reality show, this, this, this. And when you're on digital, which is a personal medium, and prime time is not your 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., prime yeah. time is my time, you know, which Whenever is I want 3 a.m. in the sure. morning and 6 hours of binge or whatever. So you are now starting to see a lot of original programming with stories which will resonate with potentially hundreds to thousands of different clusters. Uh, and we we'll kind of get in that direction. Yeah, so. sure. Uh, Mega, I, I want to come to you because you know you've seen the early days of television. Now, you you have attended Goa Fest for many years, like I have, and we've heard the debate: when will media become fifty thousand crores? When will it become sixty thousand crores? And this debate has gone on for ten years. Now it's reached seventy-seven thousand crores, eighty thousand crores. Now, but the kind of money that we were just talking about, with six, seven hundred million people each consuming fifty to hundred rupees a month, you're talking crazy amount of money. Now, where will this money come from and will it come? We are not seeing it in the, in the linear broadcast model. Will we see this kind of money? Because that is what is required to keep all three of the panel alive. Now, that's the challenge. Yeah, well, I, I don't know where that money is going to come from, if at all, if it's going to come right. at all, to be honest. Um, I think to Vivek's point as well, uh, advertising is a limited pool of growth. Right. The survival of this industry, the the sort of the OTT space and the digital space, 
has to be driven through uh, through subscription. Through subscription. Right. So um, there again, how do you sort of play that? Like the kind of money which is being spent on content is ridiculous right now. So how does the no, ridiculous high, ridiculous low? What ridiculously is high. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, at least from the scripted content point. Do you think, point you think it's then, ridiculous yeah, high? Yeah. I just want to feel. You don't let me finish my no, no, point. Let's, so <laughs> let's, no, let's not go. Yeah. Leave so me, no, no. I just want to say script. No, there is a scripted versus non-scripted space right now. Right now, everybody is in the scripted content, which is rare. But to Neeraj's point, there's so much choice. So there is a lot of content being created. Can that be able to be? Can you equate it from a monetization? At the moment, the economics are not adding up. So I don't know, Vivek, if you have a point of view on that. Yeah. No, Vivek. You know, she's got a point of view on. Uh, I mean, which I, I believe as well that there's not enough money going around for for all this. Now, uh, you know, why interrupted Monica that time? Uh, Mega, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Many times in advance. That's okay. <laughs> uh, is, we, we've come from a zero spending on content virtually. Mm -hmm. to go back to the, you know, pre satellite television, it was zero. Then it came to satellite, we were paying 50 and 75 rupees a month for tons of content. Now we have, you know, the car market, we've reached a few hundred rupees a month. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like, would you believe that? Habits will change and we will learn to pay for content. Absolutely. And your point is based on that, right? Absolutely. I, I think that, uh, uh, as Neeraj also mentioned, right, there will be more diverse uh, content catering to thousands of different clusters. No, because it's there, will people pay? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, th I think uh, th there's no doubt. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I, I've seen, and I'll give you a lot of anecdotal examples. Today uh, uh, morning, I was uh, coming in a taxi and uh, I was talking to the taxi driver and he said he would rather pay 10, 20 rupees and buy data to watch an IPL match or a cricket match than buy a Vada Pav. I mean, that's how strong the trade-off are. People are, want, they really value content and they value it to the point uh, more than the, you know, roti kapda makan, right. more than the three essentials of life. So I think in the longer term, I agree with Neeraj yeah. that Neeraj, hundreds yeah. of millions of people. Before I come to you, I want to ask, is it that uh, my age is such that I cannot visualize people paying for content? Is that a trap? I mean, no, no, that's not the thing. Actually, you, uh, if you were to just take a guess, uh, and I'm open to the audience as well, about how many people in India do you believe are actually consuming content on digital platforms and paying for it? Just, just a quick one. I mean, anybody want to take a bash? Ninan, since you're there, I know you know your name. Uh, hundred million. Hundred million. Hundred. Okay. Yeah, you're 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 not too uh, way off, is it? Mm. In my estimate, it's about 180 to 200 million people. Right. And we don't realize it. Do you know why? Because in this market, you have had a very unique format, which is you have bundled you know, services right. with data. Now, in, in the last four years, we've gone from little under a gig of data consumption to now between 11 to 17 gigs of data being used by consumer. Six, four years back, you had 300 million consumers, 650 million doing average this kind of consumption. Now, what's happening is the consumer themselves are not necessarily aware that they are paying for that. But today, on an average, about 20 rupees or thereabouts per month <coughs> for roughly 200 million people, which is aggregating about 4,800 crores per year, is the amount which either select platforms, <laughs> etc. are paying and that money is coming back into the content ecosystem as we speak today. Right. So when I say five years out, you could have potentially a 60, 75,000 crore market. At this point in time, it seems, whoa, you know, it's bizarre. But it isn't when you compare it to the core television ecosystem, which exists right now. So it's, it is, what will happen is whether we continue to be bundled, or you go into, you know, we keep thinking of these services as, I said, Netflix, how many people are playing or whatever. Now that's a, you know, that's a top end, as it were, of it. The, the kind of service which Vivek's company is running, if you go deeper into the kind of reach and uh, uh, access that they're getting, it runs into, you know, tens of millions of consumers. They have chosen to put this under an AWOD kind of structure, but the investment that they are making on content is significant because they, they were play, playing something that, you know, it will be ad, advertising driven as it were. Although I feel, you know, that mix 
is going to be at best about a 20-80 ratio, which is 20 coming out of advertising, 80 coming out of subscriptions. Right. And, and that subscription is not a large amount. I mean, you could be accessing a service for as little as 10 rupees sure. for the month. You do it for two months, you find relevant content, you're out of it. You create your own bouquet of three or four services yeah. and your allocation is 50 to 100 bucks. Yeah. Mega, you know what uh, Neelaj is talking about and to some extent uh, Vivek is saying the same thing is what they are punting on is almost the most extraordinary habit change. You know, I say habit change because I'm not used to it. We've got a large population not used to paying this. Uh, two kinds of things. One is the absolute amount of money. One is the micropayment as a habit. You know, paying 10 rupees, 10 rupees, 10 rupees, no? I've never done it. I buy my newspaper, I pay a bill every month, I pay my cable bill every month, and so on. You're asking for habit change. Now, with your experience, do you believe this kind of habit change is real? The, what, what he's perceiving? Or will it, will it be forced on us? No, I think, I see, it's, a, it's, it's also the gen, the, which the next gen is being brought up in this environment. So and for them, them it's, it's natural. Change. It's not change. It's, right. They're walking into, this is their world. For us, it's a change because we're moving, we came in from a different world. So I think in the next eight, five, 10, 15 years, that's the real, that's the real world. So there's no change. This is, this is how they've known it best. So, which is where the subscription part of the proposition is a very strong play because there will be people ready to pay for content of the choice that they want at their time. So there is a, there is a very strong play in this space. It's just the gestation period is a, might be a bit longer, and who can survive that is a question right. out I'm there. I'm going to ask the same question to all three of you. And just to add yeah. to Mega's point, on a quick 20 seconds. See, we in this room are we form just three percent of what we describe as that postpaid customer. Right. You see, the balance, 97% of this market is has been a microtransaction right. economy. So the, the next question, I said I want to ask each of you the same question. I'll start with you, Nidaj. Are we going to see a shift from, you know, taking monthly subscription services to, uh, I'll buy this little bite for 10 rupees and get out of there. I won't visit this platform again for months because they have nothing for me. Absolutely, and I'll take it. That's a very, very interesting question. I'll take it one step further. Firstly, the answer is yes. Right. So microtransactions, I mean, we as a company, I remember uh, 15 years back when we started a price point which was one rupee per day. A lot of the content industry, you know, thought that we were loony. But over a 12-year period, I think we must have done about 12, 11 and a half, 12,000 crores worth of business at end consumer price. Right. Uh, and a good 35-40% of that coming back into the content ecosystem as their monetization for it. The next level of that which I'll share with you, and this is all driven by technology, I may actually go out and say, you know what, I want to buy this film, uh, but I will buy this film and please give me the right to be able to resell it as well. So let's say the film comes with three digital lives. Say I buy it for 20 rupees. You know, I've watched it now, sell it to Vivek, he buys it for 15. You know, he's had now one life remaining, sells it to Mega, who gets it for 10 bucks. And you could just get it gifted for free, for example, or whatever. I'm so, fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> so so, so the, also, there's already a company in, in Philippines which is now talking to major broad studios and saying, if you see, because when you buy from iTunes or whatever, or any of these downloadable services, it gives you 24 hours to 72 hours, you know, to, to use it. They are now saying, okay, give me only a four hour window. I beg your pardon? Give me only a four hour window right. because the technology, the DRM technology is such that it will enable it only for four hours, etc. So there's a lot of innovation that's happening on that front as well. So, uh, uh, same question to you. So, I, 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 uh, I have a slightly different opinion. I think. Uh, uh, certainly in the long term, yeah, transactions and microtransactions could be real, but I think in the near, you know, five, seven, eight years, I think we'll probably move from ads to subscriptions. Five, but, seven, eight, that's a long window. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what scale we are talking about. Uh, for example, uh, some of the s players do, uh, you know, close to 10 million even today. If we add up uh, Amazon and Netflix, uh, even today, uh, around uh, 10 million transactions, uh, subscriptions are happening. Uh, but if we are talking hundreds of millions, uh, then I think probably we are, uh, you know, five odd years away, and it's hard to predict exactly how many. But transactions and microtransactions with all the payment friction, 
today uh, i think uh, maybe even further away at least in my mind yeah uh, no i think i do agree there is and, and we don't have to wait no with the neeraj okay. because i think uh, because it's already happening today you know, people are consuming uh, you know they they subscribe to hotstar when ipl is there they consume it and then they are walk out of it to someone some you know you only spoke about the 10 rupee 20 rupee for ipl uh, you know the the cap driver was talking about that's happening already right. so i think there is clearly uh, it's much closer i don't think so it's so far away it's in the next 3 to 4 years you will see a a, 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 a huge shift taking place in the micro transaction space and clearly that's the way forward okay no, no. it brings us, brings us to the next and i come to you neeraj you see what you're telling me is i'm a, i'm a consumer i'm going to be deluged by thousands of choices at the same time thousands it's not you know television we thought of the big thing when uh, mega and i were working at star with the three channels we were the second i think there were not even three channels so you know that was one world where there was no competition where there's a choice for the consumer now you're telling me as a consumer i will be able to choose from thousands what role is marketing going to play how do you get people to know this content exists on which platform at what price at, on what terms on what business terms mega uh, start with you before we go there i think performance marketing will play a much larger role right. than it has been uh, has been utilized so far uh, and that's the reality because if if you like i said that this existing generation is is the digital space that's where they're consuming most of their content so you need to reach to them on those platforms and hence programmatics and the performance But marketing yeah, tools are going to which takes more outdoor in bombay than anybody else you know Uh, so, 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 uh, so I I think that this uh, sort of fragmentation is not. I think this level of fragmentation is not sustainable. I don't foresee that in the longer term we'll have thirty. So you agree with Mega when she says the, you no, will I, talk to them on the medium they're consuming. Uh, yeah, I, I, no, I think aggregation will happen. In the longer term, there'll be fewer uh, platforms. Uh, I think there'll be fewer transactions. I think subscriptions will be bigger. I don't think there'll be thousand different platforms doing micro transactions at scale. I, no, I didn't say thousand different platforms. I said thousand different programs to choose from at the same time. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, so they're not platforms. For sure, there could be a lot of uh, plethora of diverse content. That, uh, Anand, I mean, you know, today if you go into any of the platforms, your choices. I mean, we are watching Mexican shows. and 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 being able to relate and understand again not trying to sound too geeky about it in another two years you will have real time uh, sort of uh, you know earbuds uh, etc which will real time be translating uh, and you don't even need to be looking at the subtitles should you want that to happen yeah. so whatever we think of keep thinking with the evolution of technology as well and sorry to interrupt uh, vivek but no he's absolutely right it's topic. not going to be thousand platforms but don't be overwhelmed with 15 20 platforms in a diverse country like ours those 15 20 platforms could have 15 different genres and that would then result in hundreds of shows etc that are getting created and this is a cycle which is the next 2 3 years everyone needs to get a core base going i mean not too many people realize netflix as a platform first 7 years they didn't produce a single show they just were aggregating and put up a sh- uh, platform like that it is after the 7th year that they went into original programming and today of a 17 18 billion dollar sort of you know content budget roughly about 35% is coming out of originals for them yeah so it's whereas where do you start that's why again go back to the origins no the origin was tv now tv the core content that was being made as i mentioned was for the homemaker it doesn't resonate with the digital audience even now google did some study about in march last year i was surprised myself that even now 70% of video viewers in india are still male which is why a lot of these shows that you've got profanity nudity those are like you know uh, a certain you know almost liberating feel that you're seeing that'll get panned down in a certain way you will start getting uh, segments and and so it's it's a blend of what the ma- the market itself needs to create a set of shows for them to become a relevant platform as it were you know we I, you know i i'm uh, doing a check in my head on what the motion was what the topic was and where are we you know as a panel on the topic 
And uh, you know, fundamentally, I don't think we've got very far in the sense we say who will win. Perhaps, perhaps the topic itself was was phrased wrong, or there's no answer to that topic. Who will win? Everybody wins. Nobody wins. We can carry on. But uh, what has given birth to is a different discussion on uh, how content consumption will happen, the ways that content will be paid for by the consumer, and the challenges, therefore, for all platforms in, in terms of what content they produce, how do they uh, sort of uh, amplify the content, how do they get monetized the content. So Neeraj, if, if I ask you, is the biggest challenge going to be getting people to know about your content and getting people to pay for your content at a value which is viable? Yeah. So, uh, I'll take a shot at your question of who will win because that's relevant as well and we are, I mean, we are duty bound to at least address that. Concern. Sure. <laughs> so, to me, there are, there are two sets of people. Uh, one is platforms who are essentially, who have audiences and hence have a mechanism or a path to monetizing that. The second is creators, you know, and, and creators uh, you know, the spectrum of creators can be very diverse as well because we are also in a market where 30 second <coughs> is also content and three and a half hours of a film like Irishman is also content and that 30 second is a TikTok kind of thing. There's a huge space for the three to five minute thing that's happening as well. So, but answering the question, uh, the biggest challenge for us, we have a fairly defined audience for ourselves. Through the network that we have, we reach 60, 62 million consumers each month. So we don't have so much of a problem with regard to having to go above the line, do whatever to promote. We have an audience. Once we have that, we reach... What uh, Mega was saying. That yeah. Is, so if we, we have that audience, it's about getting the right content and systematically moving them from you know, a try and free into a habit-forming kind of a, a, a structure. So in, in a funny way, the three of you uh, representing in some ways different eras of the business have the same challenges. There's no difference in your challenges. You know, it is still compelling content and how do you price it, how do you get the money for it? Do yeah. you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, uh, getting good quality uh, content is the key for us and that's why we are aggregating across, uh, you know, linear as well as the digital content that's more centered towards, as Neeraj was describing, the younger male audience. Yeah. Anyway, to the audience, what we are, you know, into our Q&A time, you know, uh, uh, when, when this invitation came to me to moderate this and I looked at what they wanted me to do, I said, this is near impossible, there's too much to discuss in too short a time. I think every sub end of this topic we could have taken half an hour, 45 minutes to talk about. But, uh, you know, what perhaps what the clarity I've got out of this one is uh, uh, that change is coming faster than I thought it was, thanks to what Nidhar was saying. I certainly didn't think about, uh, you know, live uh, translation happening in my year. I still thought of looking at a one inch scroll at the bottom of the screen and whether it's available in my language or not. I was looking at channel. Uh, on micropayments, I think uh, uh, Mega and uh, Neeraj are far more optimistic than Vivek is and uh, perhaps uh, experiential, I don't know, but they seem to think micropayments will uh, be uh, accepted by consumers much faster than I thought it was and that's a good sign. I think uh, advertising money not being available, I, I think everybody's common on that, it's almost impossible, you can't, it's not sustainable, it will not grow enough to sustain the content being consumed. Somebody has to pay for content, looks like the subscriber will, and the consensus by and large on my panel is that the consumer will be happily paying for content. Now, there will be a notion of content, and who will win is, I think, there's no, no uh, sort of rocket science. People who produce the best content will win. That's what it's I said. Content that. continues to be the key. Yeah, yeah, what Mega said. So we could have ended the session a long time back saying content is king and walked off the stage, but, but we needed this to but get the distribution may be God. And distribution <laughs> is God, yes. Anyway, now uh, open for questions, please. We've got about uh, 10 minutes for questions. Yes, Ninan, since the only person in the audience whose name I know. <laughs> get Thanks, the first so regional content, I just wanted to, you know, my friend Neeraj can talk about it. Uh, is this uh, South Korean film winning uh, Oscars a huge change? Will regional content uh, lead the war of content? Will Indian regional content lead the war in India as well as global? So in India, I think, you know, 
uh, it's it's actually ironic that we continue to refer to it as regional because in their market that is the mainstream uh, content. And even if you were to look at, say, one source which is cinema, today 52% of the theatrical box office uh, of Indian cinema comes from what we describe Bollywood or Hindi, but 38% comes from four southern languages. You know, uh, so. Absolutely, and I don't think, you know, uh, parasite winning is a whole different kind of uh, uh, trigger in its own way. I also believe that uh, the Academy has, you know, uh, tried to push the envelope far too much for not having enough African American and various sort of voices over the years. So they've taken it to the other end spectrum, as it were, uh, in this year. But yes, that's the thing. And the other reason why regional is showing a lot of promise to the point both Anand and Mega made. Digital programming in the last three years is atrociously high. To put in perspective, a mainstream television show of a proper, you know, regular soap is what, about 18, 20 lakhs per episode? And here you were getting to a zone where one to one and a half crores was happening. It's very normal to have 35, 40 lakhs per episode as well as a, for a market which I just described is currently at one tenth of the TV market. Uh, and that's another reason why there is a lot more shift that's happening into regional uh, as well, because it's a little more balanced. Can I also add here, um, just again, I know you said no plugs, but I just want to give an example of what we've done in Discovery, is that we uh, launched, we had a tie with the I, I, I sent a mail to them saying no plugs. <laughs> you know, and the other two speakers haven't mentioned the company names, uh, Mega has. Yes, anyway. but I want to give a, only to, to Renard's question really, because we had a tie up with the Daily Hunt, which is one of the largest news aggregators, right? And we have a Discovery Plus segment, we have short form content being consumed in eight languages there so the in the since the launch we've had something like 1.8 billion views which has happened on that platform and of which 80 percent has been non-english and that's and by off that 80 percent about 40 or 50 percent is tamil so there is a huge audience out there consuming non-scripted content at the moment so there's clearly an audience out there in this market for to consume regional Maybe I can add uh, one more data point. Uh, so we produced a show in December called Queen, uh, which was a Tamil uh, original. We also aggregate uh, Sun and Wood, so like some of the top TRP shows like Kapil and Big Boss. So in the month of December, Queen did more minutes streamed than Kapil and Big Boss combined. So which goes to, in both these are Hindi speaking high TRP shows, right? Uh, just goes to show that if there's good quality regional content, it has uh, more demand in some cases. Than you know, uh, you know, Ninad, I, I, I'm with uh, Neeraj. You know, I don't like the use of regional. I don't like vernacular. Uh, I like mother tongue or Indian language, non-English, non-Hindi content. And I think uh, of all the people in this room, your best place. You're promoting Marathi theatre. You know, the it, it's just ease of consumption in your mother tongue, wherever you are. And uh, you know, there was this uh, anchor who asked uh, the director of this Korean film. Why did you choose to do a film in Korea? In Korean. And he said, I'm Korean, my cast is Korean, the story is Korean, so where else would I do it? <laughs> a stunning answer. Yes, we have time for a couple of more questions. What about the subscriber? Will the subscriber continue to pay more and more for the content that comes up? Uh, so if... <laughs> If, see, in India, a lot about this subscription has to be viewed with the prism of what will happen with the telecom economy. Uh, if you read over the last two months, the messaging from all of them is this 150 rupee RQ over a period of time is to move to 300, whether it is to support AGR payments or whatever it may be. I can bet you if that is a process that is underway, then there will be greater and greater allocation towards content that will happen because some of the content, you know, players are not going to be sitting idle than it were. They will extend their power of flesh as far as that's concerned. It's either that or you are delivering to the consumer a mechanism whereby, see right now, a lot of this is happening because there are too many players with an aspiration for platform and that, you know, till such time that happens, you will have the free, free kind of ecosystem. But it cannot sustain at which stage 
the path to monetize and that's why I'm not saying 250, 300 rupees. I mean the average ARPU of 65 million DTH subscribers about 150, 175, right? So it's very possible to build a 50 rupee ARPU in digital spaces here with more relevant and contextual content. And I, I just add here, uh, you know, much as a lot of people uh, don't want to look at history, I love looking at history, 19, early 1980s, uh, a content staff country saw the advent of the VCR and the VCP. And those days, we paid 10 rupees per day to hire a, a video cassette. Yeah. So I think if there is compelling content, there's always a case for people to pay for it. The point is, it's not any content. It has to be con I have to want the content. And then I would pay a price for it. Yes, anybody wants to. Sir, I'm just saying that Indian consumer is very cost conscious also, right? So, I mean, however the fancy the car, the first question is, ki mileage kitna deti hai, right? So, that mileage has to come for him or her. Yeah, They want to know what's that price. So, in fact, Hotstar's pricing strategy of three, three, uh, 365 bucks a year, that's like one rupee a day, was the killer strategy for them to catapult into this huge number. So, they all want value for money, for sure. Yes, uh, the question. The gentleman in the grey suit, yeah. Just a question for Neeraj. You talked about in your first response that you will mention about why Flipkart, companies like Flipkart are getting into content. Can you elaborate, please? Yeah, sure. So the answer, the geeky answer to that is that you will see in the next couple of years the player becoming more interactive, which essentially means that the player uh, is the new real estate. Uh, and when I say interactive, you will lead to commerce, literally, from the player. Whatever you may be watching, it's one touch to, to lead to commerce. And hence, uh, all over the world, you are now finding e-commerce companies who are morphing themselves into studios as well. Because the cost of customer acquisition, to keep on reacquiring customers, vis-a-vis -vis creating habit formation, being a content destination, is the balance uh, that's, that's uh, being played out. I can take it offline and give you more of the geekiness, but uh, leave it to that. Vivek, you want to add something? Yeah. Uh, sure. I, I can give you a few examples. I think uh, uh, one reason why um, video-led commerce could be uh, very powerful, especially for India, uh, you know, the next 200, 300 million that will come on the internet, a lot of them, Will not, will not even be very well uh, literate. The, the ability to read and write. A lot of them, the purchase decision or intent uh, would be sharpened by watching a video. Uh, of course, for a lot of us also, a video, uh, re seeing reviews and seeing videos helps, but I think for the next wave of uh, new users, I think video is very important for, for e-commerce. Yes, we have time for the last question and then we wrap up. Anybody? No, no questions? Fine. There's one there. Oh, sorry. Where? I didn't see. There's a lady at the back. Okay, the lady. Yes, the lady at the back. So my question is, uh, how you're uh, tackling uh, piracy? Because that is going to be a big hindrance to your monetization. Who wants to? Anybody? You want to take that? You know, uh, as boring as this may sound, but... Uh, it's not such an issue uh, now. In fact, uh, at least in markets like ours, where the average costs of a lot of this content uh, is so low, uh, and I'll break it up into two parts. You know, you have something in, in the music industry is where piracy was a big issue initially. Today, the service layer and the cost of access of that service is kind of making piracy a lot more redundant. In the uh, video space, uh, to some extent, piracy is also being seen as uh, an affirmation that that show is popular and it is uh, sort of making the cut. Because whether you're getting to watch that show on a free network like MX Player or you're watching it on a Vodafone or, or you know, Geo or something, a lot of these places, the, to the consumer, it's being currently deemed in a bundled form. So it's the, the origin creators of that in some form or the other are getting paid for it. So. Yep, that's it. Uh, that's all from this panel. Thank you, Neha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, you know,
tough to distill this, but I hope you guys got something out of it, and I hope you have a distilled time. Thank you so much. Thank you, panel. Thank you, Anand, uh, for connecting our stellar panel. Uh, Anand, I would request you to please hand over these momentous as a token of appreciation to each of our panelists. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll now break for lunch and see you at 2 o'clock.